Hey guys, Vizerlo here. So, PlayStation is huge, and when it comes to Sony in general, most of their profits come from their PlayStation Wing. And that makes sense because Sony in general has not been doing nearly as well as their single PlayStation brand. And the PlayStation brand, especially in the 8th generation of consoles, has just been doing phenomenally. However, if you look more into Sony themselves, you'll see that they have some other lines of products that haven't been performing nearly as well as the PlayStation brand. And one of those products is the Sony Xperia lineup. Now, if you don't know what these Xperia phones are, they're basically just normal, everyday smartphones, but they're made by Sony. Xperia phones have never really had an incredibly strong market share, and their only massive feature to me that I think the only reason I'd want to get one, which I don't even own a PlayStation right now, but if I were to get an Xperia phone, it would be for the fact that you can stream the games that are on your PlayStation to your phone and then hook up a DualShock to that and play it like that. Which, that's a pretty interesting feature, but I didn't- I don't think I should just go out and buy an Xperia phone just for that, considering that there's a lot of other phone brands like OnePlus that make smartphones that are, in my opinion, better. At least when you look at value and what they offer. But when I looked at different articles I could talk about today, I saw an article by Android Authority saying that why the time is right for a Sony PlayStation phone. And when I saw this, I was very skeptical. And as I read in more into what they had to say, I could understand where they were coming from, but I just, I, I could not agree with them. But before I get into my opinions on this, if you have your own thoughts, don't start a flame war. These are my opinions. And keep that in mind for the entire video. If you have your own thoughts, please let me know them in the comments though. Anyways, that's all I have to say, and if you enjoy the video, please let me know. And let's get into this. So, first off, what would a PlayStation phone even look like? I feel like I should talk about this because although I'm not necessarily a tech channel, I think that I could provide some insight on what a PlayStation phone would at least be like so you, ha you have more of an idea of what Android Authority is trying to go for here. So basically, Android Authority says that they're expecting the phone to be almost like the Asus ROG phone, which is another gaming smartphone. And, but personally, I think that it would more just be like a Razer phone, which you don't know what the Razer phone is. It's basically just a phone literally made by Razer. And it does have some interesting, I guess, gaming technology in it that would appeal to gamers. But I just, I think that that would be the most um, comparable thing to a PlayStation phone. Especially when you look at the design, the simplistic design of just having the branding on the back. And having the features that would appeal to gamers, I don't want to use that word because it sounds really stupid. But that sort of market share, I feel like, is what, or market share, the, that design is what Sony would go with. With the 120 hertz uh, screen, I know that would appeal to a lot of people and it appeals to a lot of I guess, gamers. Even though there isn't a whole lot of gamers in the smartphone space, but I'll get into that later. So I think we would be looking at a almost reskinned Razer phone with some more Sony crosses in. So maybe you could be able to stream your PlayStation to it, and you can maybe have some PlayStation exclu exclusive apps available on a Sony phone. Or at least a PlayStation phone. Because you have to keep in mind, this would basically just be an Xperia with a PlayStation logo. So, Android Authority has listed a few reasons as to why this could work. And some of them aren't terrible reasons. And one of the big reasons that I want to get into is that Sony would have more phone market share. And I do think that if they were to release a... A smartphone under the PlayStation brand name, they would catch more people's attention and more people would buy into it. However, I think it would just be like die-hard PlayStation fans, not people who are, I guess, like, who use like Samsung phones on like Apple phones, like people who are not in the gaming space. I feel like it would just be die-hard PlayStation users. But that would increase the market share of Sony smartphones. However, not the Xperia lineup. They also noted that now is a good time because there's so many gaming smartphones coming into the markets. And that is true, right? We have the Xiaomi Black Shark, the Razer phone, and we're also going to have the upcoming Asus ROG phone. So that's three gaming phones in the past year almost, which is pretty incredible. But now let's get into the different reasons of why this wouldn't work. And I do have quite a few. So starting off, Android Authority said in their article that Now's the time because the Xperia name means nothing to consumers who actually buy phones. However, on the PlayStation side of things, PlayStation means quite a bit to gamers. However, that's to gamers, people who actually play games. And I don't mean like Candy Crush, like smartphone games. I mean like Uncharted for 
Horizon Zero Dawn, big PlayStation exclusives like that. That's what, you know, people, when they think of PlayStation, that's what they think of. When people who just buy phones and they don't, they don't even know what a PlayStation really is or don't even use consoles or play games on consoles anymore, and that's like 95% of the market that buys phones. I do think that some people who maybe weren't into gaming might get into it because of a PlayStation phone. However, I, that's just, the numbers of that would be way too small for it to even make sense. Android Authority also mentions that gaming smartphones have started to become more popular, but phones like the Razer phone have been receiving reviews saying it's good, but it is a tough sell, especially to gamers too. And that makes sense because there's not really much of a need for a gaming smartphone because there's not really much a gamer, I guess, really wants out of a smartphone that's not already there. And when I say that, I'm mostly referring to people who actually play on PC. While the majority of console gamers have basically no interest in the whole technology behind it. What's a 120 hertz screen? I have no idea. Like, that's a, that's a response you're probably going to receive from a lot of people who play on console because they don't use it at all. It's not significant to them. And I'm not saying that console people, people who play on console, don't care about that stuff because a lot of them do. It's just that a lot of the times it's never in it's never something that they encounter, so it's never something that they ever think about. And I have nothing against console gamers too, I should probably put that in. And like I said, there's not really much of a market share or a demand for people who want gaming phones and for gaming phones in general, because why would you buy a gaming smartphone? Like what are the reasons for it? You may have the technology and you may have like technology as in like one hundred twenty hertz screen. And you may also have the power behind it, but however, I do have to say, the power is usually on par with other non-gaming smartphones. I think one of the best examples is the OnePlus 6. That, that phone has a Snapdragon 845, and it also has, which is actually faster than the Razer phone, and it also has 8 gigabytes of RAM, which is similar to the Razer phone. But besides that, what else do you have in a gaming smartphone that makes the purchase better for people who just, even like people who play actual like console and PC games, what's the benefits of owning a gaming smartphone? It, you can like link it, it has like support for shadow play and all that. Okay, but like there's no massive feature that really stands out for the crowd that people who play games would really want. Now you could argue that Sony could introduce a feature like that, but what would they introduce? Linking it to your PlayStation, which the Xperia phones already do, and that has not really boosted sales. Like, there's not really much for Sony to do that other gaming smartphones can do. And it's those reasons combined of why I think that Sony wouldn't want to make a gaming smartphone. There's not really much of a reason for it, and a s PlayStation phone doesn't really seem like something even people who play on PlayStation would want because they can just get a normal phone that a lot of the time is going to have very similar specs and might even be cheaper. The PlayStation brand does not mean that much. It means a lot on the console side of things, but when you take it out of that, you can't really do much else with that. However, I do have to say, I already said this in the beginning, but I have to say it again. These are my opinions, my personal opinions, and my thoughts. If you have your own opinion, my opinion does not have to attack your opinion because I feel one way, you feel one completely different way, that's totally fine. Or you may even agree with me, or maybe I'll agree with you. That's really what's amazing about opinions, but let's not attack each other over that. And that's a huge thing that I have to mention in a lot of these controversial videos, I guess. Because I know a lot of people who maybe use a PlayStation 4 all the time, and own Xperia phones, would love a PlayStation phone. But the majority of people, in my opinion, feel like wouldn't go for that. And that's my opinion. And if you feel one way, please let me know that in the comments. I hope you didn't enjoy this video, and if you did, I would appreciate it if you let me know in the comments. And if you want to check out my social medias, I'll have them linked in the description. I really appreciate how far the channel has come, guys. I think that although my subscriber growth recently hasn't been, like, superb, I still think that where I am now is way farther than I thought it would be when I started the channel. But again, I hope you enjoyed this video, and see you.